Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Decoding SPY with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. In this presentation, we'll show how to use Rodian Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscopes to decode SPY serial data. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with the operation of MXO Series Oscilloscopes, as well as a basic understanding of the SPY protocol. If you're unfamiliar with either of these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Getting Started with MXO Series Oscilloscopes, and or the presentation Understanding SPY, before beginning this presentation. Rodian Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscopes support a wide variety of serial decodes, and SPY decodes are enabled by software license K510. Since SPY is a four-wire protocol, full SPY decode support requires four channels. These can be either analog channels, or logic or digital channels. Note that digital channels require the MXO B1 option as well. In addition to displaying and decoding SPY serial data, the MXO also supports numerous other useful functions, such as triggering on either analog or digital events, and exporting captured frames in a variety of formats. The first step in decoding SPY data with the MXO is to select Bus from the list of items in the bottom right corner of the screen. Then select SPY from the list of available protocol types. This will also create a small box labeled SPY in the signal bar near the bottom left corner of the screen. This box can be used as a shortcut for configuring SPY parameters. The next step is defining the connection to each of the four wires used in SPY, chip select, clock, MOSI, and MISO. These connections can be made either using the analog channel inputs and standard passive probes, or by using the logic channel connectors attached to logic probes. In this presentation, we'll be using analog channels, but the configuration and analysis function more or less identically for both types of inputs. All nodes on a SPY bus must share the same configuration parameters. The first of these is whether messages are sent with the most or least significant bit first. The next set of parameters involve the polarity of the signals. Remember that SPY allows for both a normal clock with a high active state or an inverted clock with a low active state. These are often called C-pole or clock polarity in SPY documentation. The polarities or clock phase of MOSI and MISO can also be defined. Active high corresponds to a clock phase of zero, and active low corresponds to a clock phase of one. Note that SPY devices may specify clock polarity and clock phase as a single mode number. The chip select polarity is normally active low, that is, the CS line is pulled down to start the communication. And finally, word length, or the number of bits in the SPY message, can also be specified. This is typically 8 bits, but can be set to a maximum of 32 bits. At this point, let's pause for a moment to talk about channel settings. Before starting serial decodes, it's always a good idea to first check that each of the SPY channels is on screen. In this example, the channels connected to the chip select, clock, and MOSI lines all appear on the screen with appropriate vertical and horizontal scaling. The most common issue in serial decoding is incorrect vertical and horizontal settings, such as the wrong time base or volts per division settings, so it's best to visually verify that the signals are on screen and these settings are set appropriately. Another potential issue is too small of a sample rate. At least 2.5 times the dot clock rate is the standard recommendation. However, given the relatively low bit rates of many SPY implementations, this is a much less common issue. Now that we've verified our input channel levels and time base are configured properly, the next step is setting thresholds. These can be thought of as the voltage values that divide a logical zero from a logical one. Here, the thresholds for clock, MOSI, and chip select are all 1.65 volts. If we enable show threshold lines, we can see that, in this example, these are appropriate thresholds since the configured voltage values fall almost directly between the high and low states of our input signals. The next step is configuring a trigger. Basic forms of triggering used to initiate data acquisition include an event on the serial bus, a voltage on an analog or digital channel, or an external trigger signal. A bus trigger that is triggering on a SPY frame or on its contents 
is the most common form of trigger used when performing spy decodes. And in most cases, the bus trigger occurs either on the start or on the end of a frame. It's also possible to trigger based on specific frame types. For example, we can configure the MXO to trigger, that is to begin an acquisition, whenever it sees a MOSI frame. In addition to basic frame triggering, the MXO also supports triggering on patterns within MOSI or MISO frames. This is configured using set details. We can define data patterns, matching criteria, and offsets in order to trigger on frames containing a given pattern at a given location. For example, here the MXO trigger occurs after a MOSI frame containing data with a value of hex 41. In addition to single events, the MXO can also trigger on a sequence of events. Please see the user documentation for more details on how to configure a sequence-based trigger. After parameters have been configured and acquisition started, decoded MOSI and MISO data is shown on the screen along with the analog or digital waveforms. The decoded data can also be displayed in the results table at the bottom of the screen, which includes information as to the state, start times, frame contents, bitrate, etc. All of this information is updated in real time. Data in the MXO's decode table can be displayed in a variety of formats. These include hexadecimal, octal, binary, ASCII, etc. The format can be changed both during and after decoding. Decoded results can be exported by choosing Export Results from the Shortcuts menu. The supported export formats include HTML, CSV, XML, and Python. The CSV data shown here gives a good example of the type of data included in the export, timing information, as well as the decoded values for each individual frame. Let's end with a brief summary. The K510 serial decode option enables spy decodes on MXO series oscilloscopes. Connections to the dot wires can be made either using the scope's analog channels or using logic channels. All SPI protocol parameters are user configurable, and these of course should also match the DUT parameters. Decoded serial data can be displayed in a variety of formats, such as hex, binary, ASCII, etc. And this data is displayed both with the waveforms and in a decode table. The MXO also supports a wide variety of trigger types for serial data. Decoded serial data can also be exported in a variety of formats. And finally, remember that it's a good idea to check basic oscilloscope settings, such as levels, thresholds, and time base, before starting decodes. This concludes our presentation, Decoding SPY with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. If you'd like to learn more about serial protocols, decoding serial signals, or rotating Schwartz oscilloscopes, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.